Here is a question that I actually had and figured I would do some research on and uh, you might be wondering also. And that is, of course, what the maximum cantilever is for a floor joist system. And uh, the only thing I could really find was in the International Building Code, International Residential Building Code book. And, uh, and it really just uh, kind of uh, gave us some charts for 2x8s, 2x10s and 2 by 12s um, so this wouldn't really be relevant to uh, trust joists or um, LVLs, um, paralams, you know, um, beams, you know, maybe a 6 by 10, 6 by 12, something like that, or even 2 by 14s for that matter. So for anyone interested or figured that, that there might, might be a maximum distance for a floor cantilever, uh, then uh, stay tuned. First thing we're going to need to consider will be the joist spacing. In this example, we have 16 inches on center and the height or the size of the joist, as I mentioned, 2 by 10 or 2 by 12. And the chart also suggests using a roof span. And, uh, you know, this is kind of where it gets tricky. You know, if you have a 32 foot or 24 foot roof span, and, you know, you're going to use this as your calculation without considering the size of the roof or the weight of the roof, then so be it. I got it. But it seems like the weight of the roof would uh, make a difference on that uh, if you were an engineer. An engineer is going to have to take a lot of things into consideration. So I wouldn't suggest just using this chart and building your floor um, with it. And with that said, I'd like to point out that I want to say the largest cantilevers I ever saw were two foot cantilevers um, with two by 12 joists, 16 inches on center. And I actually did a room edition one time where I cantilevered the joists uh, 12 inches. So the floor was only 12 inches. Um, the joists were 12 inches on center and it cantilevered out a foot and uh, they were two by 12s. So that is something I can verify, but of course it didn't have no big honking roof on it either. Next up, let's take a look at some numbers here. The example that we are using right here is a uh, two by 12 floor joist, 16 inches on center, a 32 foot roof span. This, these are the roof spans. So if we have a 32 foot roof span, 16 inch on center spacing for 2 by 12, then the maximum distance would be 32 inches for a cantilever. If we change them to 12 inches on center, the maximum distance would be 42 inches. So hopefully that makes sense. And of course, I got this from page 119 in the 2012 International Residential Building Code book. There are two different books. Don't get confused. We have the International Residential Building Code Book and then the International Building Code Book. The International Building Code Book does not have this chart in it, or at least I couldn't find it. Now, I checked with the 2018 version. The chart is identical, and um, I found it online. So feel free to type in 2018 International Residential Building Code Book. And uh, that should pop you up. Uh, I forget what the what the website is, um, but it will be in Chapter 5. I couldn't get a page number on that. Go to Chapter 5, which is floors, and uh, you're probably about uh, five or six pages in. You should find the chart. Next up, let's take a look at the balcony, the maximum distance for the balcony extension. And of course, as you can see here, we aren't going to have a lot of weight on this. But we will need to take in consideration a snow load. And the chart does not provide us with a situation where we're not going to have a snow load. So I would imagine you could go a little further out on um, 2 by 12, 16 inches on center if you live in an area where it does not snow. But Areas where it does snow, we've got to take into consideration that snow could pile up on the balcony. That's going to be additional weight that uh, could create problems for the building, even um, cause it to collapse if it is not designed properly. Again, another reason why you should uh, contact an engineer for something like this. So 
Let's take a look at the 2 by 12 16 inches on center. We have a 72 inch um, cantilever we can go out. If we have a 50 pounds per square foot snow load, that's a ground snow load. This is the amount of snow that falls on the ground. Um, and I'm not, uh, like I said, I'm not an engineer. I'm not going to go into details on that. I will probably end up making another video on this in the future to explain it. And if I do and you're watching my you're still watching my channel, then you'll see it. If uh, I make it 10 years from now and you're, you're tired of waiting for it, I, I'll apologize right now in advance for that. So hopefully this chart makes sense. Again, it can be found on the in the internet. They're letting you look at it for free now. And uh, 2 by 10, 16 inches on center, 30 pounds per square foot ground load. We can go out 53 inches for our maximum. If it's uh, we change it to 12 inches on center, 61 inches. Now I would like to point one more thing out: the standard setback ratio for the floor joists. And um, I think I have another video for that. I'll try and put a link in here if I can find it. But uh, let's just take a look at what a standard setback ratio would be. Maybe a one to a three ratio. A one to a three ratio would be four parts, three parts on this side, one part on this side. If the cantilever is sticking out two feet, then you're going to need three equal increments um, back. So if this sticks out two feet, you're going to need three two foot increments, which would be six feet. So this is a standard ratio. And this, of course, is what it would look like if the joists were a little longer and the wall was moved back. So again, one to, to a three ratio would represent four equal parts. So this can be longer. This side can be longer. It just cannot be smaller. Now I want to point out that the building code book, uh, one of the charts referred to a two to one ratio, and I believe that was for the balcony. So if it was to stick out two feet, then this would only need to come back four feet. Now um, that wasn't the case with the load-bearing wall that would be sitting at the end of the cantilever. I think they were going back to the standard three, uh, three to one ratio. So make sure you check that out in the reference area also. So I think I covered everything. If there's something I missed, you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment area. And hopefully by now um, you got a better idea that there just might be a maximum cantilever um, length, um, depending upon the type of lumber you're going to use, the roof spans you're going to use, and uh, snow loads, and of course, uh, joist spacing.